On this episode, we take an adventure into the woods and back in time, really, to find the right material for a rustic finish on an outdoor fireplace for our project. My friend Chris, who, by the way, could survive in the woods with nothing but his bare hands, happened to know just the place to find some 40-year-old rough sawn black locust, which is ideal for this project due to its natural rot-resistant properties. The wood was found in a nearly fallen down shed. It had been covered, but still weathered just enough to gray some of the boards and give them that trademark barn wood look. We started by pulling layers of the sticker stack wood off and culling the boards that were too bowed, which is about half of it, by the way. We were specifically looking for boards that were varying width and color to enhance the rustic vibe. This material had never been kiln dried, so I did check the moisture content to make sure it wouldn't shrink after we installed it. Once we had the material on site, it was time to process it and make it actually usable. To get one straight edge on the boards, I used my six foot level as a straight edge and made a pencil line. Then carefully with a skill saw, I cut the line. This process is called straight ripping, that makes sense. By the way, you could also use a track saw or clamp a straight edge to run your saw base against and get an even better result. Luckily, I'm pretty good at cutting a line and actually wasn't too concerned about perfection since I was going for a super rustic look. I visually sighted each board and some had an edge good enough not to have to do the straight rip. I marked that edge with an X, while other boards had inches of crown. On those boards with severe crown, I just tried not to cut off more material than I had to. Some of the boards like this one looked more like a rocking chair leg than a piece of building material, but I tried my best to use all the material that we'd picked up. And if you're thinking about doing a project like this for yourself, get more material than you think you need. Full disclosure, I had to make a second trip to get more material because there was so much waste on this type of rough wood. Some of the boards were longer than my six foot level, so I snapped the chalk line for the ripping. This wasn't always very visible on this rough kind of wood, so I had to trace the line with a pencil before I did the straight edge ripping. Once all of the boards had one straight edge, I took my tape measure and checked the width of a handful of boards before ripping the other straight edge. I decided that I wanted no more than three different widths for my finished product, and I found that most of the boards could be ripped to either four, six, or eight inch widths. Since I didn't stack the boards in any particular order, which I would do next time, I just started grabbing off the top of the pile and checked each one of them to see the maximum width I could get out of each one. Then I set the table saw and went to town. Wow, what a beautiful stack of wood. Two straight parallel edges, just like it had come from the building supplier. Now this material is ready to install and it would have nice even joints. And again, full disclosure, even though I was wearing glasses, I still got dust in my eye during this process. One quick trip to the eye doctor and I was back in business. Next, I had to finish the prep work on the fireplace before installation. We would left the OSB sheeting off the deck by a quarter inch and caulked that gap so no water could ever run under it and sit. Next we put a hemmed edge on some 3 inch tall black flashing and installed it with some roofing nails. We left a half inch of this flashing exposed so our barn wood wouldn't touch the decking either. Next to add another layer of weather protection and also give a dark backing, we installed some leftover 30 pound roofing felt on the chase. This is an important step because the barn wood will have some gaps and if the background was white, these gaps would stick out like a sore thumb. This video is sponsored by the Dauber Stopper. In the world of custom home building, it's all about the details. The Dauber Stopper is a great new product that gives your air conditioning drain lines a finished streamlined look while also protecting these openings from pests. Find out more at modernacproducts.com in the link in our description. And finally we get to the good part, actually installing the processed wood on the chase. I'm using a 15 gauge Senco finish nailer with galvanized nails. And since we're installing the wood vertically, I will mention that it's important to do horizontal blocking between the studs in the framing phase, and I didn't get this step on film. 
To achieve the look we were going for, I installed rows of alternating widths and made a point to stagger any butt joints by a minimum of one foot, similar to how you would do hardwood flooring. This gives it a better look, I think. For the last board on each side, I took a measurement and ripped the piece to fit. Some were slightly tapered, and in this case, I just held the board up and traced the cut line. The hearth and the area around the firebox will get stonework later. I left 16 inches clear all the way around the sides and top for this non-combustible finish. The most challenging cut on this installation was around the power and coax box for the wall mount TV. The Locust is a super hard wood, but I wanted it to fit nice. First I made some plunge cuts with my circular saw. Next I took the cut all the way through the board with an oscillating saw, and then I finished the cut out with a jigsaw. I could have just drilled a pilot hole and used the jigsaw, but that's not what I did. After a couple adjustments, I finally got it to go. These receptacles were spaced out for stonework initially and will get replaced with shower boxes later to be flush with the face of the wood. Many of our boards had a bow and did not want to lay flat against the wall easily. To fix this, I took several saw curves out of the back of the boards in the worst areas. These cuts went just over halfway through the material and allowed the board to straighten easily. This is a great trick for a multitude of woodworking projects. I also want to point out that I left the rough sawn edge on all of the corner pieces. Fresh cut edges would stand out way too much in this case. Like most construction projects, after you get this done one time, you just repeat the process a thousand times until you're done. After all the hard work, I was very pleased to stand back and see the finished result. This is a great perk of being a builder, by the way. The fireplace looked amazing, and it's a nice accent to the other rustic features going in this home. Well, that's all for now. Happy woodworking. Thanks for watching our video today. Help us out by subscribing and liking our videos. See ya.